Hello and happy Fossil Friday here at Discovery Park. I'm with Amanda Mayo, our in-house paleontologist, and she's a student at UT Martin. And we've got a unique Fossil Friday experience today for you. We have had uh, students from a third grade class at, from Lilburn Elementary in Atlanta, Georgia, submit us some questions for Amanda. And we're excited to ask those questions. Amanda, thank you for coming. Thank you. Okay, so we'll just get, dive right into Fossil Friday. So somebody has asked the question, did some dinosaurs eat both plants and meat? Yes, so uh, a lot of dinosaurs actually ate both plants and meat. Uh, it really just depends on what was available at, at the time. Our dinosaur back here, if you look at his teeth, he definitely was a meat eater because he has those ice cream cone shaped teeth. There is a type of dinosaur called the heterodontosaurid. If you listen to the name heterodontosaurid, it basically means two different teeth dinosaur. And here I have a picture of the skull. You can see their grinding teeth for grasses here in the back, and then their meat-eating teeth here highlighted in blue in the front. So yes, there were some dinosaurs that did eat both plants and meat, and they were called omnivores. Now I've heard the term omnivore before. <laughs> well, thank you, Amanda. So the next question is, how do baby dinosaurs in the egg turn into bone or possibly stone? Stone, right. So when we see dinosaur eggs today, we see them as what looks like a rock. And that process where the dinosaur egg turns into a rock is called fossilization. Fossilization occurs when something gets buried, usually under sediment. Uh, the best places to form a fossil are actually under the ocean because they get buried faster. So the fossil gets buried, or then it's not a fossil, it's just an egg. The egg would get buried, and then over millions and millions of years, it would get compacted, and more sediment would go over it, and eventually, the original parts of that egg would get washed out by the water. That structure is still there, though, and that water that's washing those pieces out is filled with other minerals. So those minerals wash into it, and it's called permineralization. So that's like we see um, the rock trees or the mineralized trees. That's what that is. So they get minerals rushed into them from the water that's around it, and that's what turns a dinosaur egg into a stone. And do we have any of those as examples here at Discovery Park? We do, we do have dinosaur eggs. Behind me over here, we have hadrosaur eggs. Okay, very good, and you guys can come and check those out when you come and visit Discovery Park. So next question, do you see similarities in the fossils that you study? Yes, there are definitely some similarities in the fossils that I study. Depending on where the fossil is from, that will be what I get my similarities from. There's an age called the Pennsylvanian cold swamps, coal swamps, and those fossils have a really black look to them, black glossy texture, because they're actually made of coal. So if you look over here, we have some Pennsylvanian coal swamps, uh, um, replicas and stuff over there, and you'll see that it has a really black appearance. So everything from that time period in the coal swamps has that black appearance. You also see um, similarities in the fossils just by the shape. So since I've been looking for fossils so long, I know what shapes to look for. I was actually on a walk on a trail today and found some fossils in Martin, Tennessee. Wow, I did not know that fossil that you could even still find fossils yeah. even today yeah. in Tennessee. Yes, I think you just think you know. I just think of finding fossils in foreign lands right. or you know in a volcano or somewhere. Thank but you so much, Amanda. And now our last and final question: What is your favorite fossil adaptation? So my favorite fossil adaptation is that of an animal called a nautiloid. A nautiloid is something called a cephalopod, and what they are is they're related to octopi and other, um, you know, squid and stuff like that. I like to explain it as someone literally shoved an octopus inside a snail shell. That's what they look like. So um, through the years, when they first showed up in the fossil record, the nautiloid had a really plain shell like this one here, and they had these things called sutures in their shell and what that was is it added structural integrity to the shell and made the shell stronger. These guys lived up in the zone of the ocean where there was still some sunlight and there wasn't a lot of water on top of them. As the species got older and as they continued to evolve, they started to add more ornamentation to those sutures in the shell. And what that did is it added more material into the shell and made it stronger. And then they added more and then finally there's barely any space in between the sutures there. And what that did is it allowed them to go deeper and deeper into the ocean and live there because the water pressing down on them from the top was not gonna crush their shell anymore because they had that extra structural integrity in the sutures of the shell. 
So that's my favorite adaptation that I found in the fossil record. Very good. Well, thank you so much, Amanda, for answering these questions. And we're going to try something new. If you have any questions that you want to ask Amanda or anybody on our education team about fossils or dinosaurs or really anything here at Discovery Park, feel free to comment below and we'll be back next week. So thank you so much and thank you, Amanda. Thank you.